Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. You got Luke. Luke, continuing our series on companies that built the world, we're looking at HP, also known as Hewlett Packard. In this one, this is this is definitely a recent one where I feel they definitely did kind of build the world. Uh, like a perfect they did example. A lot. A perfect example is Apple probably wouldn't exist right now if it wasn't for HP. Well, that is true. Yeah, they have our, our, our boy Waz, friend of the show. He check and, out our episode on the Waz. Yeah, he and uh, I forget the other guy's name that Steve was involved Jobs. with Apple. Yeah, Steve Jobs. <laughs> I genuinely <laughs> forgot his name for a second. Involved with Apple. Um, Understatement of the century. Yeah, sorry. Um, th- that th- I, they I think Wozniak when he was twelve or something like that. I read was working for HP or something. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. So let's jump in because they have a long history too. It is kind of like the rise and fall of HP in some sense, yeah. but we'll, we'll get into this. So let's do the details. So the co-founders were David Packard and Bill Hewlett. Uh, William, were... to those of you who aren't yeah, friends like Luke. Exactly. They were founded in 1939. January uh, 1st. Interesting. To be specific. Very planned. Uh, I found a wide range of number of employees but i don't know if this was like pre-split or post-split the number i found was three hundred and twenty-one thousand globally what so i'm guessing that's before that's bananas to the two different divisions my Um, goodness that's big and in 2020 um this is the hp uh, that sells hardware, not the services, because they broke into two companies. In 2020, they had a revenue of 56.5 billion with a B dollars, and that was down three percent from the year before. So it wasn't a great year for them in 2020, which I don't think was a great year for a lot of people in 2020. But it's, still, it's reasonable. I would take 56.5 billion. Just saying. Oh, I actually didn't want to tell you this, but I inked a new sponsorship deal, Ooh. and it is a little above that number. 56, so. <laughs> 57 cents. <Yeah. laughs> uh, wah, wah. Uh, the two, Bill and Dave, um, your good friends, were both electrical engineering graduates from Stanford University. I love it. We finally have people that graduated from college doing something amazing. <laughs> they actually graduated from college. Actually. Thank goodness. Oh, you're Ooh. right. Good call. Um, they became friends back in 1934, though. And in 1938, they started part-time like working out of a rented garage. And I found this really entertaining. They had $538 in working capital, consisting of a little bit of cash and a used drill press <laughs> like, well, this know. is what they built this company off of i i, I yeah uh I, I i saw that too i i didn't see the drill press but i saw yeah. the fact that it started the 500 bucks was pretty yeah. crazy a couple fun facts for you shoot the it was the first of many technology companies to benefit from the ideas and support of engineering professor you know we love our education mm-hmm. uh frederick terman who uh pioneered the relationship between stanford and what eventually became silicon valley so good for you frederick terman we should then, probably do something on him sometime we could that might be interesting you're right all I bet the different he has... companies that he's been involved with or spawned off That's cool. Good thinking. Make a note of that, would you? Um, Fun fact number two, Bill and Dave flipped a coin to decide on the company's name. (laughs) My guess it it was now, I tell you what, if it was going to be Packard Hewlett, that is terrible. So I was thinking about that. Is it or does it just not sound right? Because HP is such a household name now that we're like, how could it be anything else? I don't know. I, I First of all, I totally would have cheated if you and if it was like you and I, if it was going to be it like, been like a double headed coin, or I something. totally would have cheated and made sure that I won because there's no way we could start with your name. Just saying. James and Luke, Luke and James. Yeah. Oh, gosh. OK. Oh, do you want to get started or should I with the uh, whole you timeline? Start. You can start with the timeline. I, 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 I'll let you go. Okay, so I don't know really when it started, so that's not a great start, but somewhere around the 38, 39 time 1939. Frame, a drawing on Bill's, like they were drawing on Bill's uh, study of negative feedback. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bill and Dave produced HP's first product, the resistance capacitance audio oscillator used to test sound equipment. Sounds pretty basic. It was they called named it. 
Oh, go ahead. No, no go ahead. HP no. model 200A. So first exactly. of all, why would your first one be <laughs> 200A? Why wouldn't it be 100A? Right. Did they, like, maybe they built something that didn't work or something and they just, but nobody else knew this. So I'm with no. you. Should be the 200 or just the 100. Why even yeah. need an A? Do you see so, who their first customer was? Yeah, go for that it. This is their great. Their first customer was Walt Disney. So they sold like six or eight, eight, of, eight these, of them. Yep. Uh, audio oscillating resistance capacitor. And what they, what they were used for was testing uh, sound equipment. And yeah. uh, yeah, they're getting theaters Disney. ready to show mm-hmm. off Fantasia, the musical experience that it was way back in 1940. How awesome is that? That Disney is your first customer, that that's, lowly that's scrub good. of a company. Yeah. My goodness. Would you work for Disney? Mm, I would. I think I would. I feel like I feel like I would builder. work for them. It's a resume oh, man. builder. I feel like I would be a terrible Imagineer, but you know, goodness, yeah. it would be fun. Um, so this was also kind of cute. In 1940, Bill and Dave uh, decide that all employees should share in HP success. They issue a $5 US Christmas bonus and adopt production bonuses, laying the foundation for the company's profit sharing program. Well, how nice I just, I just like want to hug them like, oh, look at them giving $5 bonuses to everybody. So is it immature of me that every time you say... Uh, Dave and Bill, or I'm Bill, and Dave, Bill and Ted. I, I think of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And... That's why I was like stumbling there when I was saying it because it yeah. almost came out Bill and Ted. So, <laughs> um, what do you have next? Uh, I got 1957. Whenever they first went public, their 57. stock oh, sold my goodness. at sixteen dollars a share. Okay, which isn't too bad because. Also, it's 57. Uh, That's big money now. Yeah. So their all-time high, though, which I'm really surprised by. I thought it would have been better. Their all-time high stock was $78 just in 2000. So they've never, they've never been like one of those like three, four, five, you know, $600 stocks like Apple or some of these other ones. Yeah, I don't know enough about the stock market to really weigh in on that sort of thing. But I do think like. Uh, stock splitting was a lot more common years ago. So maybe their stock split a lot and kept the price low. And then, I don't know, someone, Apple or someone kind of bucked the trend to yeah. have these like high price stock things. I don't know. Uh, to go back just a little bit further. Oh, geez. Uh, during, I know, I'm sorry. During World War II, the company developed uh, products for military applications. And you know, I love some of my military you do. stuff here. Um, and it was so important that it merited Packard a draft exemption. Like the stuff you're doing is so good. We're going to let you not get drafted. How come wow. Hewlett didn't get it? I wondered that too. I, I wonder if it was a choice. Yeah, yeah I, I wonder if it was him. a choice. But Hewlett served as, in the Army Signal Corps. Uh, throughout the war, the company worked with the Naval Research, Research Laboratory to build counter radar technology, which makes sense, as well as advanced artillery shell fuses. During the war, HP did some like pretty cool things. They started including health insurance for all employees, which is was really groundbreaking at mm-hmm. the time. They developed open floor plans to help with creativity. Um, and they began working in the microwave field, which was really advanced technology for the time. Uh, they also incorporated in 47 uh, with Dave as president and Bill as vice president. How do you think you go about that decision? Do you think, same like, thing. It's a coin toss. It's like, do you think it was a coin or do you think William there was like, so okay. Who, who's the president? So Dave was the Packard, president. Dave... Dave Packard was president. I see if if, if you're going to if you're going to give Hewlett the first and Packard the second, you think that they would have been, you know what, you get to be the president then. Do you think that's it? I'm thinking that that Dave was probably the brains like he he they got, did say that like he was the one who exec- was exempt from the war. Mm-hmm. He's the president. He became the first CEO eventually. I think maybe he was really the the was of the operation and maybe bill was the jobs of the operation. I, I, I get that. I definitely yeah. get that. Interesting. Okay. So before we catch back up to your time frame, uh, let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. Hewlett Packard. Absolutely no. not. Luke, oh. we're not allowed to say those things, we, but we HP, if any of you work at HP, know anyone at HP or have any connections there, 
why don't you hook us up with a sponsorship? We will sell your everything. Heck yeah. Shamelessly. Shamelessly. We love HP. Shout outs. Two shout outs. Joseph got? M is numero uno. I think you're going to like this one, Luke. Oh, no. A launch engineer at Firefly Aerospace. Sweet. How awesome, right? I love they, Firefly. Absolutely. They're targeting this quarter for their first ever launch, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Now, he had a lot of really cool stuff to say, other than referencing a Hallmark movie, which made me a little like, eh, do I trust okay. him? But he did say Domino's has a really good gluten-free pizza crust. Oh. It's made out of cauliflower, and he pinky promises that it's actually good. So, What's this guy's name, Joe? Joe, yep. Joe, I, I I will order it in the near future. And if it's terrible, Joe, uh, I know where you live. And <laughs> He's I going to Bill you. Firefly. I will totally pull, I will Liam Neeson you. I will find you. Yes, Luke does have that set of skills. So that was very nice of him to be concerned about. Thank your you, Joe. Awesome. Uh, the next one was Brad H, a mechanical engineer major at BYU. He loves the show. I've tried many a time to find another show that I think is entertaining and interesting, but you guys are the best. Mm. James, Take that, everyone else. Anytime you're looking for something better than us, it's gonna be a letdown. I'm just, who, I'm just saying. Who was the guy we were trash talking? Oh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah take that, Joe <laughs> Rogan. We're the best. <laughs> take your millions of listeners and dollars and get out of here. Yeah. Um, also said, also just thought I'd shout out Autodesk because I use Fusion 360 all the time to model stuff. I'd definitely try using Inventor if I could, but unfortunately I don't have crazy podcast money to afford that. Good news, Brad. As a student, Autodesk three Inventor years, right? is free for you to use for three years. And if you're in school even longer, I believe you can even renew that or refresh yeah. that. You just, so, you just need a, an EDU email address, I think. Yeah. Uh, so Last I checked. And yes, I mean, I do have lots of money from the podcast. I actually just bought four mansions just to store my piles of cash, which is pretty great for me. Yeah. But as a student, you can now work and model just like us bajillionaires, yes. podcast people. So all that power, no cost. Also, to go back to Joe, they're slapping a big Autodesk sticker on the rocket that they're I shooting I heard off. that. So how cool is that? Well, I mean, it's a sticker, so it's it's going to just peel right off. It's what, would be, <laughs> what would be cooler is an unprofessional oh engineering sticker gracious. on the rocket. We might have to uh, email. We might have to get that sticker in the mail sooner than everybody uh, else's. That's a, if we could do that, oh my gosh. I would retire. I'd, yes. The podcast would be over. Would Anyways, be. if you all want a sticker on your rocket, if you... <laughs> Well, yeah. let's, let's worry about that one. Um, if you want to say hello, you want to request a sticker, you want to make some uh, episode suggestions, if you just want to tell Luke about good gluten-free options, whatever mm -hmm. you want to talk about, we're cool. Email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and review. As always, we love reading those reviews. And you can always tell your smart device to play the Unprofessional Engineering Podcast. Luke, I'm going to take a second here. I get down on the podcast a lot, right? Like okay. I get stressed out at work. I get tired. I don't want to research stuff. Honestly, reading these emails where people are like, man, I love listening to your podcast, right whatever. Day. It really does. It really makes me not want to quit doing this. Aside from the bajillions of dollars that we make. Ah, oh, goodness. Okay. okay. So let's back into the fifties, to... Luke. Yeah, so uh, I, I talked about their initial stock offering whenever they went public mm -hmm. of, uh, of 16, 16 bucks. Um, do you have anything between then and the 60s? Because a little bit happens in the 60s. Um, they did something with the Korean War. It didn't seem very interesting, so I skipped over it. Uh, early 60s is the first thing I have, 1962. Okay, what do you got? They made the Fortune 500 list for the very first time that year, coming in at 460. Man, I'd love to know what the other 459 like companies like are. Nine now? I don't know. They've got to be up, up there. there. Yeah. So, so that's what I had. Continue. 1966, they made this computer. Uh, it was the 2116A. I, I'll give you a dollar, James, if you can guess what the minimum price was of the 2116A. Without cheating and looking all over your screen, I can see your eyes. I am. I'm looking if I have any price listed. Uh, I'm going to go with twenty 
eight thousand dollars you you're good it, the minimum price is twenty five thousand dollars it can go oh. all the way up to fifty thousand could you imagine spending like like computers are like throw we're gonna play a game a little bit later on uh for their current computer prices but computers in some sense are almost throwaway they're a couple hundred dollars and if something happens to um. it you just you just up, upload it to the cloud and you go get a new one if it breaks you know it's just like i mean if you have podcast money, twenty five thousand yeah. dollars for a computer is insane yeah that's really crazy and that was like the low end holy oh, goodness cow. gracious yeah imagine uh, the system you'd have today so in 1968 they invented the or introduced it was probably worked on before that the hp 9100A. This was a scientific desktop calculator. Did right? you see the picture of this thing? Yeah, it I is love it. enormous. It is literally, it looks like a, one of those old word processors, like back in the 80s and 90s. It has a huge keypad and then it has like a little thing that prints out the calculators and stuff on it. Yeah. Um, but apparently it was still really good at solving, you know, calculations for you. So even though it was enormous, it, it was, it was still really good. Our timelines are a little, well, our timelines are the same, but the information we have laid out is a little bit different, but didn't it say then like shortly after they also created like a pocket calculator, which almost immediately made the other thing obsolete because so everyone's was, like, look at this thing. It's so it light. A four year period. Okay. From, four, in four whole years. They, in 68, they came out with like this 37 pound desktop calculator. And then in 1972, they came out with the HP 3000, which like went in your pocket, which is like, could you imagine those people that spent like thousands of dollars on this desktop calculator that like had like a pool start on it? Like it was an, like a, like a lawnmower. And then you give me a pocket calculator, which is yeah. insane. I see it here now. It was like a sixth of the price of the original desktop unit. And then, you know, drove the, drove the other one into obsolescence. But if you think about it, like think back to, I think it was our transistors episode and how like, like things were, moving so the fast and change. technology yeah the rate of change is just so outrageous it's been doing this for how long now where you know it's totally different i get it but if you think about it going from this giant first one-of-a-kind desktop calculator to having a pocket calculator four years later that's really powerful it's the same sort of thing it just mm -hmm. keeps growing it's unbelievable um what do you have next what year? uh i go to the 80s this is oh, the uh okay. So this let is me eight... backtrack a little oh, bit. Okay, then. go ahead. Uh, let's see here. I thought there were a couple cool things. So back in the '60s and '63, they introduced the HP 5100A frequency synthesizer. Don't really know what that does. Don't really care what it, it synthesizes does. frequencies. It, well, when you put it that way, it sounds simple. <laughs> One of the most complex instruments developed to date by the company. It was used in deep space vehicles, which I thought was cool. But then in 64, HP instrumentation gained international recognition. I heard this, like, one. this was pretty cool. Yeah. With like, they did like this big publicity stunt. Company engineers, because engineers are the best, flew around the world with uh, this cesium beam HP 5060A instrument to synchronize the globe's atomic clocks to within one millionth of a second. How, how cool is that, right? Yeah, I, would, I imagine that that would be a fun trip. So what are yeah. you guys doing for the next couple of weeks? Oh, we're just traveling the world, carrying this thing in our backpack, just synchronizing atomic clocks, you know. Yeah, the first spectrum analyzer, the 8551 became their first 1 million a month product. That's, that's a lot of money. Uh, and then a fun fact that I wanted to throw in before we move into uh, your timeline again, the military ex uh, expertise of HP was underscored in 1969 when US president, super honest man, Richard Nixon, appointed Packard Deputy Secretary of Defense, in which position he oversaw the initial plans for the development of two of the country's most successful jet fighters, the F-16 and the A-10. Really? What can this guy not do? I never knew that. Like, How did I miss unbelievable. that in my research? Okay. Yeah. So just found this to be fascinating. Okay. Um, actually, before we go any further, I think it's time to take a break for this week's Luke's rant. Okay, so my rant, I'm punching a HP right in the kisser with this. There one. goes our sponsorship. So a couple years ago, I get I needed a printer, scanner, combo thingy, 
HP, you know, these things are super cheap, right? We're going to play a game a little bit later to, to demonstrate how inexpensive, how cheap or expensive they could be. Uh, so we get this printer and it comes with ink and I plug it in and then it's all Wi-Fi enabled. And I get this email that says, so do you want to subscribe to Insta Ink? When you run out of ink, it knows because the printer, it, like I can email my printer and it'll just print stuff or you can give it a Mac address and it'll print stuff. So it's like, oh. That way, I don't have to, that way I don't have to run to the store when I need ink. Like you always run out of ink whenever you need it. So I was like, who wants okay. to put on pants, right? Exactly. So I'm thinking this makes total sense. And I didn't read anything or look into it. What this, what this business model is, James, is it's not they send you ink every time you start to run out of ink. They allow you to print allow X. you x number of sheets for a monthly fee so i was on this like 50 sheet or 25 sheet a month you know plan and if you exceed it you start you get charged like 10 cents per print after that and for like years i'm seeing these bizarre charges on my debit card wondering oh it's hp i'm not sure what it is blah blah and here what it was was every time my daughter was printing out like a book report like a 200 page whatever i'm getting charged like 10 cents a, a sheet after she prints 25 copies and so it's not an it's not an instant ink subscription it is a a copy subscription number of copies so i upgraded it recently it's still pretty cheap it's on, i think i'm on like i get a hundred prints a month and it's like eight dollars but if you think about everybody in the world doing this and if you're not paying attention they are making so much money because you print the wrong thing you do the quantity wrong so i i it's genius, but I feel it's dirty somehow at the same time. It's weird. I, I can't explain it. For any of you who need your printing needs met without <laughs> the hassle of going to the store, head over to www.hp.com slash Insta Inc. Use Luke's the special print. code. <laughs> use the special code on professional engineering for a 10% discount. I thought so, you were going to give the email address for my printer. No. And people could just email <laughs> if I knew my it, printer. that would be so good. Oh, Free prints. Hilarious. Luke will mail them to you. Oh uh, that does seem like a bit of a... Yeah. Great business uh, model, but business it's, model. Yeah, yes. it's a little shady, I think. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, that's funny. Maybe Sorry. you should have read the fine print. Like. I should have. Uh, moving on to the 70s. Uh, so in the 70s, um, the HP's first business computing system, the HP 3000, um, this a mini perform, computer, uh, mini, and by mini, it's big, uh, <laughs> performs dis distributed data processing that same year. It's the same year they introduced the uh, the pocket scientific calculator. So the same year that they made the desktop calculator obsolete yeah. in 72. Um, and supposedly this HP 3000, I don't know if I read this correctly, it's still in use in some places. I find that hard to believe. I could see the government doing that. Yeah. In some, no. in some, in some nuclear silo. They Honestly, have an HP yeah. 3000 They're so running. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I, so you made note of this earlier or mention of it. In 1976, there was this lowly stinking intern that worked there. Terrible at everything. Yeah. Stephen G. Prankster. Wozniak. The Woz uh, built a prototype of the first personal computer and offered it to his company like a good intern would do. Of course. HP was like, get out of here with your ideas. Mm -hmm. And so Woz joined some other bum, Stephen P. Jobs, and created lowly old Apple some computer. Some funny Inc. Apple company. Yeah, uh, some fruit company, right? Is that the uh, Forrest Gump thing? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, I move into the 80s next, where HP introduces the first desktop computer, the HP 85. Was this the one that was a terrible failure? Because it wasn't IBM compatible. It was that one. That seems like a big miss. Like, I know you're a big that? fish at this point, right? But you're not IBM compatible. And you're right, exactly. It totally failed because of it. I thought it was interesting because the next like venture they took into the PC market, the HP 150, which they fixed their mistake. It was IBM compatible. Mm -hmm. It had a touch screen. Like, I mean, that really? was, yeah, that's like, 20 30 35 years ago like yeah, that's really touch interesting touch have been around for a long time right? they have but they really feel like if you haven't watched technology. our episode about how touch screens work make sure you check it out Ooh, good plug luke well done I like that i never uh, do those 
the, you don't, it's usually me. Uh, the company's first successful product for the PC market though was actually uh, uh, a printer. Of course it was. The HP LaserJet appeared in 1984. Brave reviews, huge sales, all the money started flowing in and it became HP's single most successful product of all time. That same year, they unveiled the first laptop Oh, HP really? 110. Like, like not their first laptop, the first laptop. Like in the world ever. Because I think everything wow. before this was, was big and desktop style. You know, yeah. Apple was doing those big one piece. I always thought those were things. interesting. Yeah, the monitor like slash everything. Blue. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. Huh. Wow, that's very cool. Um, I saw that in the mid eighties, HP found it was losing a bunch of its business to computer workstation companies like Sun, what mm -hmm. was it, Sun Microsystems? I don't know if they're still around or not. Uh, Silicon Graphics, Apollo Computer, a bunch of other ones. HP eventually bought Apollo to become like the biggest workstation, workstation like kind of like desktop makers in the world. And then like it shared that position with Sun for a while. And then Dell came in and kind of took over as well. Um, but I'll let you get into it more, but basically the next 20 years, I would say, is just a comedy of errors for the company, which is rather yeah. unfortunate. It feels like a whole lot of bad decision making, like the acquisition of Compact Computer uh, didn't seem like it was as successful as 20, they thought it would this be. Was, this was this was like 2002. Yeah. They bought Compact for $25 billion in 2002 and i mean I, I i don't know like how big acquisitions were back in the early yeah, 2000s it feels like a lot of seems dollars seems like a lot of money like yeah. a lot of money yeah i guess the they had brought a ceo i think it was like carly something carly fiorona uh, or fiorona Fi yeah, yeah fiorona uh, first woman to lead the company which uh or to lead a company listed in the dow jones which um started back in 1997 uh hp became one of the 30 companies to make up the Dow Jones industrial average. So good for her. But this acquisition of Compact was like really it's fought disastrous. against. Yeah, yeah, it was really bad. A lot of people didn't want it to happen. And basically it's my understanding that this was the reason that she then lost her job. Yeah. Was there were so many people against it and it didn't immediately return like big money. And then she lost her job. Uh, then it, And I'm skipping ahead a lot. Is there anything you want to cover in between? No, that? this guy by the name of Mark Turd. No, Hurd. Mark, Mark did Hurd, you, sorry. Did you call him Mark Turd? I, saw, I, I was Did he do seeing, a bad job? He ended up being a pretty bad guy. Well, uh, maybe it fits so, then. So Mark Hurd, sorry, Mark, uh, takes over as CEO in 2005. The stock price doubles because, Ooh, good job, uh, Mark. because, because he's there. Um, unfortunately... Um, about five years later, not yeah. unfortunately, he's 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 a bit of a sleazeball. Uh, so he resigns after facing some harassment allegations from a contractor. And I don't know who this is. And I was afraid to look it up because uh, I don't want it to be in my search. Uh, <laughs> apparently, he forced he had some some harassment allegations by I saw that. a yeah. former reality TV actress named Jodie Fisher. I, I, I never heard of her. And I, I didn't I didn't want to Google it on my computer because that's the last thing I want to do. So yeah, I'll just leave fair. it at that. That's fair. Yeah, I saw also in 2010, again, in the comedy of airs that was HP at the time, um, they acquired Palm Inc., uh, which was America's big manufacturer of personal digital success, assistance. Right? No. No, <laughs> no. But I feel like it really shows kind of like the difference in companies. And like, it's tough to run a big, giant, successful company. Mm -hmm. But like the difference between innovation and like, we're going to acquire to continue to be competitive. Yeah. They were acquiring technology that became very obsolete very fast. Yeah. I'm sure they spent a lot of money in it and it just was a bad decision. When you think about at that time, that's when iPhones are rolling out or mm -hmm. you know, like groundbreaking, like just, just seems like a bad and, and I think this is a lot of those like 
why you do something and how you do something because like the why was good it's like they they knew digital assistants were going to be a big thing like they, they knew that palm was onto something but the way they went about it just through a pure acquisition right not right. thinking long term the way apple did with you know can it connecting it to you know your, your 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 cell phone device so yeah so good ideas bad execution i think yeah a lot, a lot of a lot of that going on. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about with the company? I, I'll throw one more thing out there. Shoot, they were doing really poorly, and uh, what's his face? Um, I think it was uh, da, 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 Packard. Well, I think it was back. Packard. Yeah, he went into came retirement and he came out of retirement to save the company. Did a good job, and then was like, okay, this time I'm out for sure, guys. Like I'm not coming back to save you. I so I did like think you that was interesting. Me to do that sometime, Luke. Can you come out of retirement? I could do that. I might do that right now. So the only last thing I want to talk about, and then I want to play a game with you that we mm -hmm. can end on. So uh, in 2015, uh, HP, this is five years ago, six years ago, um, they actually split the company. Uh, so they, they took uh, the company and they broke it into uh, Hewlett Packard or HP Inc, which does the, the, uh, the PCs and printers. And then the other portion of the company is like services and like those types of things. It's Hewlett Packard Enterprises, uh, which I have no idea what, what Hewlett Packard Enterprises is versus Hewlett Packard Inc. But I feel like the one now. that does the printers, Hewlett Packard Inc, shouldn't be INC. It should be INK get it because they're printers i get it how it's how okay so here's our game so what we're gonna do james you are, do not look on hp's website i i will not also gonna, go check out their website it is really good on their history it is it is so uh we're gonna go through their current line of products okay. Okay. laptops desktops printers and monitors and you're gonna guess the lowest price of a of a device mm -hmm. and the highest price of what they have available so these are all commercially available not like the things like maybe a, a, a company might buy so okay. laptop, James, what is the lowest price laptop they have? How much is it? $399. $319. Very good. What is the highest priced laptop they have, James? Uncustomized. So let me Uncustomized. Just say Their highest price laptop. $3,200. No, $1,400. Holy cow, that's it? But it's uncustomized, so it's not loaded wow. up. This is like the wow. off-the-shelf. Uh, I still fun. thought they'd have a more powerful, expensive one off the shelf. I think that one you can build up to like a three grander. So how many laptops do they have, you think, in their lineup? 12. 22. Ugh. Okay, desktop computers, James. What is the lowest price desktop computer they have? $599. Three ninety nine. It's one of those ones that doesn't uh, come with anything. It's just, it's the box with just all the ports in it. It's empty. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. What, what do you think their highest price uh, computer is? I feel like my last guess was good this time around. So thirty two hundred. Twenty two ninety nine. Okay. Okay. That's so, so still less than I yeah, thought it yeah, would 20, be. Yeah. Tw yeah. Twenty two hundred dollars is, is is a pretty expensive desktop. Yeah. Uh, how many desktop computers do you think they have? I feel like desktops are less popular. I'm going to go with a dozen again. Uh, 18. 18. Okay, I'm getting closer. Okay, here we go. This is this is where it gets interesting. Oh, what boy. is the lowest price printer they have? $39.99. <laughs> You're actually pretty close. $70. 69. 70 okay. And I think that might be the one that I have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's the cheapest Mine. printer. Mine's definitely, it's not an HP, but it's like, I'm just going to throw it out when I need new ink, I think. Now, here's where it gets bananas. What's their highest price printer? Oh, dear. Like a business line one? I don't know. 15000 No, actually, I'm sure they do have business line ones. Their I'm highest price printer is $2,300. Jeez, Louise, can you imagine? How many printers do you think HP makes? Oh, goodness. 30? 23. Okay. And our last category, and this is probably the most humorous, what is the lowest price monitor HP makes? $119. 109. Wow. Oh, I was really close. Good. I was close. This is, this is the crazy one. What's the highest one they make? I feel like it's like a television, right? Um, $899. Seven thousand five hundred and eighty-nine dollars. <laughs> close. It's actually a dual display. Oh my uh, gosh! Which is insane. They're sick. Could you imagine a sixty-five-inch <laughs> dual display monitor? Like that is insane to me. 
I feel like I did really well. And then that last one, I'm just like 10 X off. On La- last question. How many monitors do you think they make? And then we'll wrap it up. Oh, monitors, uh, 18, 22. You've been, 22. You've been in the wheelhouse. Of yeah. Those yeah. You did pretty well on this. Thank game. you. Thank you, James. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I think we need games more often to we wrap do. things up. Anything else you want to share with That's the all listeners? That's I got. Awesome. Hopefully you all enjoyed learning about HP, found out some cool things you didn't know about them, dabbling in the military, making expensive print jobs for Luke and his daughter, all of that good stuff. If any of you have any HP stories you want to share with us, if you want to talk about getting some stickers, if you want to put a sticker for unprofessional engineering on your car so it gets stolen like the other person's did, on your rocket, on anything, why don't you email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And until next time, see ya.